Hi guys! In this video I'm gonna show you how to make 4 different kinds of miniature plants and flowers for your dollhouse. If you're interested in more types of miniature plants or miniature flowers, you can check out my miniature plants playlist by clicking on the link in the top right corner or in the description box below. Full disclosure, I'm very much a beginner when it comes to miniature plants, so this is gonna be a very very easy project. For starters, I'm gonna show you how I made these super simple vases. And whenever I have to make miniature vases or pots, I mostly use old caps from a variety of things like lipsticks, perfumes, nail polishes, markers, basically anything that is small enough and not too wide in shape will work. And yes, I do have a box full of old caps from a variety of things because I'm a hoarder. But anyways, this is what I chose to make my vases, uh, a cap from an old nail polish bottle, one from a lipstick, one from a marker and even an old thimble. Now, obviously, if you want, you can just leave your caps as they are, but I wanted to customize mine just a little bit, and I'm gonna show you four very quick ways to do that. The first one is a marker's cap, and I thought it was a bit too tall, so I decided to cut off the top part. And since this cap already had this cute vertical lines sort of bas relief motif, I decided to keep it simple, and I just painted it with a matte spray paint. I really liked the metallic gold finish of the lipstick cap, but I felt like it was a little too Christmassy. So I used masking tape to cover two thirds of the surface and then I spray painted the rest with matte white paint. Some of the paint leaked under the masking tape, so I just stripped it off with a toothpick. If you don't have spray paint, you can just use acrylic gesso to paint your caps and since acrylic gesso is not as opaque as spray paint, I had to apply several coats. I wanted this vase to look like it was made of glossy porcelain, so I covered it in clear nail polish. Finally, for the last vase, I wanted to be a little more creative and I used 3D paint to create this diagonal dotted motif. I used masking tape to make sure the dots were following a straight line. Originally I planned to leave the vase like this, but I thought that it looked too plain, so I added a simple marbled pattern with acrylic gesso. Anyway, if you want to see a different, more elaborate way to make miniature vases, you can check out my previous miniature plants tutorial linked in the top right corner of this video. To fill the vases, I used fiber fill. If you don't have it, you can use cotton pads or felted wool or anything that is soft and somewhat fluffy. And to mimic the soil, I used coffee. I literally just emptied some old coffee pots and let the coffee dry in the sun until it was completely dry. Now that the vases are done, we can begin to make our miniature plants. And I'll start with lavender, since it's the easiest one to make. For the stems, I use floral wire. Floral wire is basically just wire that has been covered in paper. If you don't have it, you can just use regular wire. I painted the stems with green acrylic paint. And to make the flowers, I used micro glass beads. I originally bought these beads to mimic salt and sugar on miniature food, but they are super versatile. And what you want to do is cover one end of the stem in wet glue and then dip it into the jar of glass beads. Once the glue has completely dried, you can paint the flowers with acrylic paint. I used three shades of purple, one for the base and then a lighter shade and a darker shade applied just in spots here and there. And now we can place the flowers in the vase. And since the wire I used is very soft, I firstly poked a few holes in the soil with a piercing tool. For the leaves, I used a sheet of copy paper that I painted with alcohol markers. You can use any other kind of color. I like to use alcohol markers because they color both sides of the paper at once. Then I used a paper punch, but just this bottom part of the leaf. So if you don't have this punch, you can just cut a few tiny strips by hand.
And once I had some leaves ready, I started gluing them to the stems quite randomly using white glue. I used tweezers to slightly curl the leaves. I then painted the base of the leaves with acrylic paint to better blend them with the stems. And our miniature lavender is done, so we can move on to the next plant, a peace lily. Now, I have to be honest, I'm not super happy with how it turned out. I think I made a couple mistakes in making this plant, and I'll point them out when we get there. But anyway, in making this plant, I started by making the leaves, and I painted a piece of green copy paper with alcohol markers, and you can just use white paper if you don't have any green one. I used a leaf punch to make the leaves, I was very excited when I found this paper punch, but if you don't have anything similar, no worries, you can just cut a bunch of ovals or you know, drop like shapes by hand, it's pretty easy. And again, I'm using floral wire to make the stems. Now, the leaves that I cut with my leaf punch had a little bit of a curved shape, so I decided to curve one end of the wire, but if your leaves follow a straight line, you can just skip this part. And then I shaped each leaf by curving it downwards and pinching its tip. I made just a little over a dozen of leaves. And once again, I used acrylic paints to paint the stems. Now, this part right here is what I believe is my first mistake. I decided to paint beans on each leaf, but I'm not good enough of a painter and it doesn't look very realistic. So I kind of regret doing this, or I wish I did it better. <laughs> but anyways, once you have all these leaves ready, you want to paint and shape a few more loose leaves, because we're going to need them later on. And to shape these loose leaves, I used two embossing tools in two different sizes. Next, we can begin to make the flowers, and again I used floral wire for the stems. For the central part of the flower, I once again used micro glass beads. And this is where I think I made my second mistake, because I think this part is maybe just a little too big. So yeah, if I had to make this again, I would probably make them smaller. To make the flowers, I drew and cut a few drop-like shapes on white copy paper. I like to use manicure scissors to cut curved shapes, because I find that they make the job a lot easier. And as you can see here, I cut in half the lower part of these drop-like shapes. And then I glued the two halves to give the paper a rounded shape. Finally, I glued the flowers to the stems using white glue. And then I decided to paint the flowers with a coat of gloss varnish, but I kind of regret doing that. I'm on the fence about it, what do you think? But anyways, once all the leaves and flowers were ready, I started placing them into the vase. And I put most of the leaves in the front and all of the flowers at the center. Now at this point, the vase looks quite a little bare, doesn't it? But don't worry, we're going to fill all this empty space with the loose leaves we made earlier. And basically, you want to add as many leaves as possible so that the plant looks full. The final step is to move and bend all the leaves in different directions so that it looks a little more natural. And this is the final outcome, and since I'm not very happy with how it turned out, let's move on to the next plant. And it's a polka dot begonia, which is honestly like the cutest name for a plant, isn't it? And I'm using floral wire once again, but this time I'm twisting several small pieces of wire on one another to create a sort of skeleton for the plant. And once this skeleton... I'm not loving this work, 
but I can't find a better one. <laughs> but once it's done, you want to cover it completely with hot glue. And by the way, you can see another way to use hot glue and wire to make miniature plants and trees in my previous miniature plants tutorial. And now that the trunk and branches of the plant are done, we can fit them into the vase and color them with acrylic paints. And I use green paint for the vase. And then I added details with dark brown paint. Now it's time to make the leaves and again I'm using green copy paper and alcohol markers and again you can use anything you like as long as you end up with a piece of green colored lightweight paper. And then you'll want to draw a few kind of heart shaped leaves and you won't need many, I just made five. I think five to ten leaves are fine. Once you've cut all your leaves it's time to shape them. And to do that I put each leaf on a sponge and sprayed it with water. Then I scored the leaf spines with an embossing tool. And you want to be very careful here because wet paper is quite frail. So be careful not to push too hard with your embossing tool or the paper will rip. When your leaves are completely dry you can color them with acrylic paint. First I painted the back of each leaf with very diluted red paint. For the front part of the leaves I used dark green paint and I basically painted a line over each embossed vein. I also painted the edges of each leaf with the same dark green paint. Now this is the fun part, adding polka dots to the leaves. And to do that, I used white acrylic paint and applied it with embossing tools in different sizes. Instead of embossing tools, you can use the back end of your paintbrushes and toothpicks. Finally, we can glue the leaves to the branches. And as usual, I'm using white glue and I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the center of each leaf before placing it on the branch. When the glue is dry, we can bend the branches and leaves to our liking. Our miniature polka dot begonia is done. We can now move to the last plant of this video, a primrose. Or, well, sort of. I wanted to make a primrose, but I think it might look like, I don't know, maybe something else. I don't know flowers. But I do think it looks kind of cute, doesn't it? This time, to make the center of the flowers, I'm using mini beads, glued to one end of the wire slash stem of the flowers. To make the petals, I once again used copy paper and alcohol markers, and I decided to make my flowers pink. And I would suggest you to use a paper punch to cut the petals, anything with small petals or tiny circles will work. I decided to use this one, and I cut 5 petals for each flower. Once you have all your petals ready, just put a tiny bit of glue all around the central part of the flower and stick the petals to it, slightly overlapping. If you want, you can use watercolors to add a gradient effect to each petal. I decided to paint little dots on the center of the flowers with acrylic paint. And these are our little flowers, we can start to insert them in the vase. And you want to put them all at the very center of the vase. And we're going to fill the empty space around with leaves. To make the leaves, I once again used these paper bunches, and I wanted to have leaves in two different sizes for this plant, so I used both. I also used the same copy paper painted with green markers that I used previously. I made the bigger leaves first. I colored them very quickly with acrylic paints, and then I sprayed them with water and shaped them with an embossing tool. Then I made the smaller leaves. I colored them as well with acrylic paints, but I didn't shape them. I just left them as they were because they're so tiny.
when all the leaves are done you can start filling the vase with them and I started by gluing the small leaves to the stems of the flowers one by one. Then I started to glue the big leaves. I glued the first layer of leaves directly on the soil in the vase and to do that I put a bit of glue on the back of each leaf. I finally used the remaining leaves to fill all the gaps and this time I put glue on the top part of each leaf. And our miniature maybe primrose is done. And that is it everyone. I hope as usual that you enjoyed my video. If you have any questions just let me know in the comments. And until next time, bye!